friends, I'm Jess. Welcome to the Hex Library, where I post reading, writing, book, and planner related content a couple of times a week. If you don't want to miss any of the fun we have going on here, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell down below. Uh, this week we're going to be doing my TBR for the Summer Square Readathon as well as Pick Pongathon. The Summer Scare Readathon is a readathon that I am hosting that's taking place from September 1st through the 10th. There's an entire announcement video for that and I will link it down below. And Pick Pongathon is being hosted by Crystal at Von Book Reviews and I will link her announcement video down below as well. So hers is going through the entire month of August. That's the wrong month. September. We're in August. And after the month-long event that was the Amazing Readathon, I decided to be extremely kind to myself. And I'm going to do the two readathons separately. So while they technically will overlap for the first 10 days of the month, I'm not going to worry about any of my ping pong prompts for the first 10 days. Now technically I have already pulled my spins for that. Um, I filmed that first so that I didn't have to change camera angles but I actually could do all of the pick pong prompts in my TBR for the Summer Scare Readathon but I'm being kind I'm separating them. So for the first 10 days I will strictly be doing the nine prompts for the Summer Scare Readathon. I will be giving you a book for each prompt although I don't technically need to read all nine books to hit all nine prompts because some of them cover multiple prompts. And then from the 11th through the 30th I will be doing the Pick Pongathon. And for that I am doing there are two different versions. There's one where you actually play Pick Pong and let Pick Pong choose your prompts that you get the version of if you don't have pick pong you can do a random number generator version as well which is the version that I'll be doing with a bit of a twist. So we're going to go through the Summer Scare Readathon prompts first then we'll talk about my twist for the pick pongathon and then we'll do my pools and then I'll tell you what books I'm reading for that. I also still need to look up one of the prompts what it means because I'm not 100% sure. I think I know but not completely sure. Okay so the first prompt for the Summer Scare Readathon is a middle grade and I have picked out for that Small Spaces by Catherine Arden. I don't know what this is about. I know that it is like a mid-grade horror series that has I think four books in the series so far. At night they will come for the rest of you. It is with this ominous warning that 11 year old Ollie and her two friends Coco and Brian set out on a chilling adventure in the woods with nightfall fast descending and the ever watchful eyes of scarecrows on their backs. What had begun as an unremarkable school trip to a nearby farm soon becomes a frightening journey into the world behind the mist. In order to survive and not remain trapped there forever Ollie and her friends need to be quick on their feet as they work to unravel a hundred year old mystery, save their classmates, and beat the villainous smiling man at his own game. Small Spaces is a deliciously creepy and hair-raising tale that readers won't soon forget. You know I love my mid-grade spooky so. The next prompt is a pumpkin on the cover. For this I think I'll be reading Pumpkin Heads which is a graphic novel. I don't remember who it's by but that is like the only pumpkin on the cover thing that I have found that wasn't like some weird smutty thing. I did not look for books that fit this prompt before I picked this prompt. I was just like what's spooky in the fall time? A pumpkin put it on the cover. Was that my best decision ever? Probs not. Next for a book that includes demons I have A Witch's Guide to Fake Dating a Demon. Uh, this is by Sarah Hawley. I have had this on my shelves for a couple of months. It was one of my most anticipated releases of the year. I have not yet picked it up. My option, um, I have another option for this which is Not Your Crush's Cauldron by April Asher which is the third book in the Not A Witch You Wed series. I have an arc of that so I could also read that as well if I choose to not pick this one up. I have a couple of options for that. This book follows a witch who is not very powerful and she's trying to perform a spell that should help make her more powerful I believe and instead of doing that she instead summons a demon who thinks he's there to uh, do a contract to sell her soul and so he refuses to leave until she sells him her soul and she refuses to tell anyone that that's why he's there because she doesn't want anybody to know how bad at magic she really is and so she instead tells her family and friends that she's dating this guy and that's why he's always around. So it sounds like it's going to be hella cute. Next for a horror or thriller I did pick a specific book but again most of these will fit for this prompt. I picked up Exiles by Jane Harper. Jane Harper is one of my like mystery uh 
favorite authors. I like her, like they're kind of crime procedural, some of them. Um, this is, in particular is part of a series, so it is the third book in a series um, that follows, I can't remember his name, Aaron, what's his name? Aaron Falk. The Aaron Fark. I just said Aaron Fark. The Aaron Falk series. First book in the series is Aaron at his old hometown where a girl that was a friend of his went missing many years prior and everyone thought that he killed her but they could never prove it and then in modern day one of his friends has been murdered along with his wife and their child and they're trying to figure out who did the murder in the present time while he's also trying to figure out who actually did the thing in the past what happened because he knows it wasn't himself and it's pretty bloody and also the thing about Jane Harper is when she writes she is very detailed into the aesthetic around her. The environment is very much a character in the story. They're all set in Australia because Jane Harper is Australian. Uh, they're fantastic reads. Highly recommend. For a book with a spooky word in the title I will be reading Darcy Coates any Darcy Coates. Um, for example, I picked up The Haunting of Lee Harker as well as The Fullcroft Ghosts. Um, these are the two that I have purchased most recently, but I have like 17,000 in my audiobook list over there. Plus, I mean, technically demon is a spooky word. And so, I mean, there are a lot of options for spooky words, but I will probably be reading a Darcy Coates for that. The next two prompts, I'm going to give you two books that work for both prompts. Um, one is going to be only read at night and one is going to be under 200 pages. Um, for those both, I'll be picking up a mid-grade spooky from the two series that I read, which is Sarah Normal and Creepover. Creepover series is a book, every book is different. They're not actually like a continuous series. They're all just set at some kind of a sleepover where something creepy happens, which is why it's called a creepover. The Sarah Normal series follows Sarah who can see ghosts and her magic continues to grow throughout the series. I am on book nine of the series. So uh, these are both under 200 pages and then because they're so short, they both lead to being read only at night as well. For a book that is diverse to you, I will be going with The Girls Are Never Gone by Sarah Glenn Marsh. This is a queer haunting story about a girl who does like a podcast about hauntings but she doesn't really believe in ghosts and so she goes to investigate a centuries not centuries decades old murder trying to figure out if it was actually ghost related or if someone really just killed a girl and apparently there's something queer that happens does she fall in love with a ghost i don't know what actually happens because i haven't read the book but it's been on my tbr for the past couple of years um it was one of my most anticipated reads in 2021 and i haven't picked it up yet so i do own a a audiobook copy of it. I pre-ordered it um, but I've never read it so. And then the final prompt is a book that is outside of your comfort zone. For that I picked one that I have been getting more into but I'm still a little iffy about and that is adult horror. For that I will be picking up Meddling Kids by Edgar Cantero. This is kind of like a spoof on um, obviously as you can tell from the title and the cover um, Scooby-Doo. It is set in 1990 where in the past there were four friends and their dog who solved this crime and now in the future, in the present day I guess I should say, in 1990, the one of the guys has died. Basically what happens is the three of them that are left living start having nightmares about the death of the other member of their group and the guy that they had arrested all those years before um, is put on parole and is released and um, one of the characters realizes that she doesn't think that he ever did it and so they need to figure out what actually happened to um, their friend and also who actually committed the crimes if it was a murder I don't really remember they need to figure out who actually did the crime in the past as well but yeah it's an adult horror which is not a genre I jump into a lot but one that I am interested in so obviously or I wouldn't have bought this book so those are my prompts for the summer scare readathon now it's time for the pick pongathon tbr essentially again I'll have the pick pongathon linked down below for you because this is by someone else it's not by me I did pre-film my picks and basically I'm doing the random number generator version but with a twist as a sneak peek for my tbr game for next year next year i'm going to be doing tbr bingo it's not complicated it's not hard there are plenty of people who do tbr bingo basically i just really wanted to buy the contraption and roll the thing and i mean honestly i haven't even thought out like the complete logistics of the game yet um but i had bought the bingo 
roller thing and the balls and like I have all of his stuff already and I was like that would be great for technically a random number generator um so I just matched like whatever you know because it's b1 through 75 and there are I think 72 prompts um so if I get any of the last three I'll just make up a prompt for those otherwise that's what we're doing and also you kind of have a sneak peek of what we'll be doing next year next year we'll be doing tbr bingo because tbr takedown as fun as it is will not necessarily make sense next year it probably still will but i don't know but to figure it out we'll figure it out when we get to next year okay B7. Prompt number seven is treat yourself. I have no idea what that means, so we're gonna have to look that up. Firstly, I can't read. It doesn't say treat yourself, it says treat yourself, which is what I thought. Same deal. However, in the month of August, I purchased somewhere around 40 books. So definitely not buying any more this month. Um, for that prompt, I will read one of my new purchases. I don't know which one, but yeah, there are 40, so I have plenty to pick from. All right, next one. Another one that's white, so it's going to be a B as well. B12, which is least excited for. Excellent. After that, I have least excited for, um, I don't know that I have anything on my shelf that I'm not excited for because at this point I have unhauled probably over a hundred books in the last year and a half or so. I'm really going through what I have and just chucking anything that, um, I haven't liked the first couple of pages of. It's, it's been a time. However, um, the book that is the longest sitting on my TBR currently is The Novice by Tara Mathrew. Um, so I'm going to count this as my least excited for because it's been here for the longest amount of time since 2017. And so that to me would mean that I'm the least excited for it because if I was more excited for it, I would have picked it up by now. Next one is G60, and this is Second Chance for a Book or an Author. Second Chance for a Book or an Author, and I am going to go with Stone Cold Heart by Kaz Freer. I read the first book in the series, Sweet Little Lies, either earlier this year or late last year. I liked it. I didn't love it. I gave it like a three star. Um, so this is more of like a, if I don't like this book, I probably, like if this is also a three star, I'm probably not going to continue on with the series or with the author. Um, like it was decent, but sometimes you're like, maybe the first book is just there building everything up and the second book will be great. You never know. So this will be my second chance book. And as you see, there's already one other one in there. So we're just going to roll right around and get number four. And it is... In 37, in 37 is a mid-grade, so mid-grade. I then got the prompt of a middle grade um, for that. I'm not going to pick out another book. I'm sure it's going to be one of these three. I'm sure during the week of Summer Scare Readathon, I'm not going to get to all three of these. So one of these three will be my mid-grade. Also, my brain just remembered that if I get a five or a zero, I have to add a spin. So we got a zero over here with our 60. So we're doing five books. And we get G46, if it will, G46, there it is. And that is a backlist book, which works well for me. For a backlist book, I'm going with Title by Amanda Hawking. This is the third book in the Water Song Quartet. I started reading these in 2019 or so. 
Um, I still really like these. I just honestly haven't picked them up because I have to read them physically. They are only audiobooks of the first two books and I have never picked up the third book that I only have in mass market paperback and I hate to read these tiny little books. So as always I will be pulling a book from my TBR jar during the TBR takedown video for the month of August so there will be another book added on with that as well. I've also decided that if I make it through my five pulls for the pick pong -a -thon, I will just go back to the bingo ball thing and pull another one from that. So these are the books that I'll be reading for both readathons. Um, again, I may not get to all of these or I may add in other books. Who knows what's actually going to happen, but this is kind of what we're looking at for the month. If you made it this far in the video, leave me a puppy emoji in the comment section down below because bingo was a dog. I will see you guys next time. Bye!